Remember when you were a kid? You liked to go out to play, and if you ever got hurt, a band-aid was never far away. In some places, going out to play, even in your own backyard, isn't safe. And when you get hurt, a band-aid is not going to fix it. It all happened in Kaiyang's grandmother's yard. He was two years old. Kaiyang's father tells us what happened. A hidden cluster bomb part, also known as a bombi, had exploded next to Kaiyang and his uncles. All three were maimed. Kaiyang was the closest to the explosion, and now, with much of his face destroyed, Kaiyang is blind. After his accident, Kaiyang cried for three straight months. This is when he met Barbara and Dori Shimoda of the organization Give Children a Choice. The married couple have been behind getting Kaiyang surgery in Thailand, getting his family's land cleared of bombies, and most recently, enrolling Kaiyang in a Thai school for the blind. This is a piece of shrapnel taken from Kaiyang's eyes. As you can tell, they're pretty large. He said, the United States left me a present. What happened to this family is not uncommon in Laos. You can go to any home and say, do you have a Bombi or Bombies on your property? And they'll all say yes, or they all say they know they're there, but they don't know where. That just seems so wrong to me. And who's to blame for the suffering an entire nation of families has to deal with? Where did all these Bombies come from? During the Vietnam War, the Americans bombed Laos without the knowledge of the public or Congress. Two million tons of bombs were dropped. That's equivalent to one bombing mission every eight minutes for nine years. This was the secret war. Cluster bombs were targeted at communists hiding in Laos, but they inflicted casualties from 98% civilians. 30% of those 260 million did not explode. That means there's about 80 million bombies still sitting in the ground waiting to be discovered. These bombies are also called unexploded ordinances, or UXOs. 60% of UXO victims die, and the rest are permanently injured. To hear a UXO blow off, people say to themselves, oh, it's another one, hopefully no one got hurt. To avoid more accidents like Kaiyang's, education is crucial. A preschool principal explains. A standard lesson in this preschool textbook says, we were farming nearby, or we were making a fire, or we were disassembling a bomb for parts to use. So we caused an explosion. We caused people to get injured, become disabled, or die. But a sign couldn't help Mr. Ye Lee. He had an accident trying to support his family. It's a family unit, they all play a role in daily life. So when one disappears, things get thrown out of whack. Ye Li's entire family now depends on his eldest son, Yang Li, who is only 15 years old. Yang 
from childhood. In some places, teenagers like Yang Li have to become adults prematurely. In some places, mothers fear for their children's lives, like Mrs. Doi, the wife of yet another victim. In some places, schoolboys, like Mr. Knott, face danger walking home from school. Every day after school, the schoolboy walking from the other side up the mountain and come back here, along the rice field line here. Every day they were walking here, not happen. But in that day, something happened here. Today, Mr. Knott endures the extreme pain of his injuries. And his family endures the pain of seeing him hurt, like all other victims' families do. These are real people, families and children. These are people we met, people we hugged. people who need our help. People we're helping. And a grandmother willing to make the ultimate sacrifice for a boy whose only mistake was acting like a child. <laughs>